Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Adam RPG with me, Bergaton. We're going to continue exploring the Roaring Forest, which is one of my favorite areas in the game. In part thanks to the small amount of NPCs there are to talk to. Uh, we talk to these two, or technically one, depending on how you want to look at interdimensionality. There's only two left to speak to, and they are nowhere near as long-winded as the two we've already spoken to. So, going forward, the easy peasy. I'm going to wait for him to come to me. Also, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but the Sheila bit is a reference to uh, Shelob, the spider from uh, Lord of the Rings. The descendant of Ungoliant. I'll let him come to us. Good job, Zobars. Alright, well I didn't like how my teammates blocked me off there, but they'll do that sometimes. They'll uh, hinder your ability to participate in battles. I feel like I'm getting gypped there. You get 18 for killing one, but only 35 for killing two. That's one whole experience I'm missing out on. Alright, is this the direction? Those are the wolves. They're part of a quest here. I don't think it breaks the quest if you kill them first. It shouldn't. So you get a quest to kill the wolves for the other couple that are here in the Roaring Forest. And if you leave and come back... Oh, there's more here than I thought. I might be in trouble. Well, maybe not. They're not that tough. But if you leave and come back without killing the wolves, uh, the couple will die. Job, Fidel. Decent experience payout. No, he does not need food. He's only missing one health. So one thing about this game, the trait, I think it's called Glutton, that gives you a penalty it gives you so I forget exactly what it does, but it gives you a significant bonus to your stats. With the trade-off being that if you don't eat for so long, it's the penalties are much worse. But there's so much food available in the game from start to finish, there's no reason not to take glutton. If you're looking for a trait to take, like if you're concerned about not having food, um, there's always plenty of food around. So this is the way forward for the uh, quest that we're here for currently. Just gonna do it once around. Yeah, see? What's this? Pre-ward vodka. It's a good place for that. I wonder if that was there the first time I played, because I know I didn't find it last time. 
Oh yeah, and a commenter is nice enough to let me know that I missed a skeleton back at the crash crash site. So on our way back to uh, the abandoned factory, we'll stop by there. Well, I guess on our way back to the drunken lair, because we have a quest to turn in there after this location. If I can turn it in. Uh, Petrovich might be too mad at me. But I will I will try regardless. Oh, hello. Some money and some canned food. Always welcome. Alright, so we looped all the way around that way, right? Yeah. They came from that way, so there's only this way to go. And here's that other couple. Got an axe. I don't remember how the axe stacks up to the uh, other weapons. I'm sure it's like the pry bar, where it has a high AP cost, but it hits harder. Yeah, 7 to 16. For 4 to 5 AP cost. Once you skin animals, chance to ignore armor 10%, and critical chance plus 6%. It does hit a lot harder though. It's probably worth taking as long as I play the slow tanky route and also control my companions so that they don't run in too fast. I still see this being handy. I'll probably keep it on hand and then just equip the pry bar when I need to lockpick. Anyway, let's talk to these two. Nothing of note. A woman of around 60 years old is standing in front of you. She's dressed in a woolen shirt or skirt, a shirt, a knitted vest, and thick rubber boots. The woman is a bit overweight, but she looks more robust than fat. Her gaze is kind and friendly. As she notices you, she immediately turns toward you and waves amicably. Hello, youth. Are you studying the history of your homeland? With the help of living fossils like me and my old man? Come here. Don't be shy. Come on. Closer. Or else if the forest roars, I'll be able to hear anything you want to tell me. We've got the Roaring Forest here, you know. That's what they call it. And for good reason, too. I'm kidding about the roar, of course. It's not loud enough here to drown a voice. But it can interrupt a conversation occasionally. Or the earth tremors can be so strong that you can barely stand on your feet. You're approaching the merry old woman. In the past, you've met many people who tried to hide something from you, who ignored you and even tried to avoid a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Here, the situation is clearly different. Uh, greetings. I'm traveling through your lands. It can't hurt to talk. The woman smiles at you amicably and puts her arms akimbo. I knew it. A traveling local historian. A rare species nowadays. How can I not welcome such a guest? What do you want to talk about? Our customs? This wondrous place? Or something else? Now why do they call this forest that? The woman shrugs with a smirk. They're calling our forest that for a reason. Now tell me, dear. Can't you feel it yourself? Or maybe your feet are wooden, like those of a dummy. Although I think even someone with prosthetic legs could feel it. The ground. That's the thing. It's shaking like mad, and there's hum in the pines, a moan almost. Many, well, everyone really, see it as a bad sign. They say a forest won't shake for no reason, nor will the trees hum like pylons. But as you can see, we couldn't care less. We just go on with our lives. That's something that earned the forest its nickname. It doesn't bother us. There's indeed some it or something, which frankly I doubt. It may just be this. Earth crust has just cracked somewhere down there, and these are just the activities, seismic ones. A volcanic activity. Ah, this is possible as well. A one brainy kid told us that while he lived with us for a week, he was a traveling student. That's a whole different story. Also a worthy one, by the way. He sang such songs when he was wasted on local moonshine. Ah, they were really touching. About young women, about education certificates, and about how their dean mutated. Oh, I even said... I even feel sad remembering it. I'm still missing him. He... he has... He as good as became my son in that week. Yeah. Well, that's curious. Hmm. Can I ask you something else? The mistress of the forest readily nods to you. I was just about to ask a few questions about you. 
Bowman nods and gives you a friendly smile. Of course, dear. Do ask. What do you have on your mind? What questions? Uh, what is your name, if you don't mind telling me? The old woman smiles, revealing her well-preserved teeth. Whatever you want. Mom or Mrs. If you, if you want to call me by my name, by the name, then it's Vladlina Karpovna. Karpovna? And how should I address you? I know many people nowadays have surprising names. The ones that back in the days they only used to call dogs. Nicknames and code names. I wonder what's yours. It's simple. My name is... Oh, it's interesting to hear. Donnie, or Alligator. <laughs> or is, is it Sasha the Feisty Skeleton? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the woman nods with a smile. Nice to meet you, Donnie. Glad to make your acquaintance. Likewise. Uh, what's your occupation? The woman grunts, and with a wave of her hand shows you the scenery around. Running things. All around here. There, I've got a berry patch. Here I've got trees that once every couple of years figure out how to bear fruit against all odds. There's a mushroom glade not far from here too. A spring for laundry and for water. I'm running things here, so the old man doesn't get covered in bark. The old stump that he is, bless him. The harsh mund mundanity. How is it, living in such an unusual place? Your interlocutress throws her hands up with, laugh with laughter. It's bearable, you know. This forest is the most unusual place in the whole area. People make up legends and various theories about it. But I guess it only seems scary from the outside. If you're living right in the center of it, it doesn't seem all that unusual anymore. Nobody bothers or pesters us here, really. Uh, we're living a calm life of our sunset years here. We may even manage to die before one of the popular prophecies is fulfilled. They're just horrendous. For example, they say that we hear the hum here because the Soviet government dug a mine here, and they reached hell. Now the demons can't wait for the right moment to get it out to the surface, and pierce everyone with their forks and staves. How intriguing. Uh, do you have any interesting stories or gossip to share? The old woman shakes her head embarrassedly, as if apologizing to you. A news spread like wild wildfire, but not here. I can news get here if people are afraid to even show their faces in this forest. I only get news in my dreams. Dreams must be the most interesting things we get to see in my old man, my old man's and mine calm life here. Although, I actually took interest in dreams even before the war. I'd even write down some of them. For example, this is what I saw in the 86. A cow shed at a collective farm with five rows of stalls, ten each. In every stall there's a fat cow. Suddenly the clock tower on the mountain strikes midnight, and a thin and sick cow enters each stall. It kills and devours the fat one, and takes its place. The bombs fell only a few days after this dream. Recently I dreamt about a cow again. A big and fat one, the swollen and tight udder. The cow is sitting in a mud stall, and nobody milks it. It saves all the milk for its calves, and in that dream I'm asking someone, where are the calves of this cow? And the someone I'm sort of talking to screams at me. No, don't. If you look at the calves, you'll fear the night. But I'm a disobedient fool because I still turn around, and through the roots and mud and the mud walls of the cave I can see the calves hurrying to suck their mom's udders. Thousands of disgusting, blind creatures crawling on their pink bellies, pushing, squealing, finding each other to death, spilling the slippery filthiness that they've got for blood. Thousands of legs, crooked, abnormal. Hundreds of jaws filled with sharp teeth, calling their mother with a groan, a howl, a thin, monotonous whine of accursed flutes. I screamed so much that night that my old man thought I was going to kick the bucket. I thought so too, but I was lucky. Yeah, this story makes me feel uneasy. Yeah, that's, that's the truth. The mistress of the forest readily nods to you. Alright, we're actually going to cook something real quick. So we're a little banged up. No, excuse me. A short, smiley old man in a knitted hat is standing in front of you. As he sees you, he chuckles slyly and slaps himself on the knees. This makes his trousers covered in patches amid a small cloud of dust that sparkles in the light. Heh, just look at him. A traveler in a roaring forest. What a surprise. My name is Valerie. Nice to meet you and all that. So Valerie is the guy that Petrovich wanted us to find. He was one of the three friends of, or I guess one of the two friends of Petrovich. Petrovich being the third one. The old man's voice is cranky but merry. His body may not be young anymore, but his soul apparently still is. Uh, likewise, my name is... 
Oh, that's the most interesting part. Let's hear this. Armor piercing Bratislav. <laughs> Donnie. Was this name given to you at birth? Heh, I admit. You live up to your name. You're a real Donnie. Both in your appearance and behavior. And why do they call this forest roaring? Because these earth tremors happen in a certain pattern. Normally you don't even feel them. But occasionally you get a good shaking. Although it's been a rare thing lately. Why do the tremors happen? There's plenty of various opinions about it. But I've got one of my own. Now far from my old missus's in mine home, there's a very strange hole in the ground. I saw similar ones in other parts of the forest as well. I can't say for sure because I have no proof, but it seems to me that under the forest there lived the various ones. God knows who. Hmm. Old man Valerie chuckles and shrugs in agreement. Can I ask you a few questions? The man wipes his nose with his sleeve and winks at you merrily. Go ahead, ask me. I don't mind answering a few of them. Aren't you scared to live here all alone? Old man Valerie pensively scratches his beard and sighs. That depends. Not really. There is one thing, though. Recently a wolf pack came to our lands. Wolves, wild dogs. They wander in the wasteland, but they've never visited us before. Now, however, one such pack settled really close to us. I haven't told this to my missus yet, as I don't want to scare her, but I think that soon they'll be get brave enough to come after us. I'm too old to fear death, but if some strong man who happens to be passing by could deal with this bane, uh, that, that would have been more than welcome. What's your lucky day? I've killed the whole wolf pack. The man throws his hands in the air and grunts it with content. You're amazing. Great job. Wow. This means I should thank you somehow. You just... wait here for a moment. We're not rich, really. Uh, but for obvious reasons, we can offer you various forest products. I in moment. He motions to you to wait and followed by a surprised look from his wife, he rushes into his wiki up. After rummaging there for a couple of minutes, the old man Valerie gets out with a content look on his face and grunting goes back to you. In his hands, he's holding a small parcel. Oh, there you go, fighter. There's plenty of good stuff here. You could use these, or sell them. I oh, thank you. This can really come in handy. The only man places a parcel in your hands and nods with satisfaction. I guess we weren't destined to die from the wolf's fangs after all. That's right. Oh, what do you do, old man? What is there uh, to do here? I take care of the household. Uh, my missus and I collect berries and mushrooms. On holidays, I set, tra set traps for the animals. Sometimes I go fishing in the nearby stream. There's not much fish there, but it's enough for me and my missus. And that's just great. Uh, what do you know about this forest? The old man smiles amicably. Ah, we've got a nice forest here, Donnie. People are scared of it. They avoid it. But I authoritatively, authoritatively state that this is a good place. It's quiet, peaceful, and beautiful. Only rarely do different travelers and hunters wander in. Sometimes, I think, some people set up camps here at night. Although I've never seen them myself. Yeah. The thing is that I remember it used to be greener before the war. It's sort of dried out now. As if someone's been stealing its fertile soil, or chewing on the tree's roots. No, you don't say. Huh. Keep that in mind. I see. Do you have any interesting stories or gossip to tell me? The old man gives it some thought. To be honest, I can't remember anything special, Donnie. We're sort of cut off from the outside world here, as you can see. But you can go ask my old missus. She loves a good chinwag. Heh. <laughs> Alright, can I... Do I not have this quest for, uh... It's possible I don't. Let me see. Alright, so I may have botched the quest because I made... Hmm. So I click through all this again real fast. Alright. So what did he give me? It says my inventory is updated. Oh, here we go. That is useless. So I don't know what all Zulbars can have. Can he put on a bandana? No. 
I only know of like two or three things he can equip. He has armor and a helmet. He might have goggles. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to be pretty encumbered going forward. This is going to be a problem. He still has plenty of carry weight, though, so let's give these to him. And we have way too much meat, but we'll deal with that. That's important to keep for Zulars, for all the damage he's going to take. about the experience because again uh, Zolbars and Fidel don't get quest experience so they have to get all the combat experience they can he's getting there yeah they'll both level up before we leave the forest well, that was disappointing Is there not a, another path that I didn't take? Oh, it was just this one. Let me go through here real quick and make sure there's no like stashes or something that I can't see. I'll take that back. There is another NPC to talk to here, but it's not a very long conversation. Okay. Here's where the other, this other conversation takes place. That's the reason why I'm having them group up with me, and I keep quick saving. Hello, you. A strong-built man in a cap comes towards you from the underwood. He keeps looking back, and so doesn't notice you until you must bump into each other. The man jumps with a surprise and quickly steps back, threateningly pointing the barrel of his massive rifle at you. Have you been here all along? Have you been following me? Take a closer look at the man's weapon. Wow, that's an incredibly rare and very high-quality rifle, the VSS, more commonly known as the Venturez. You saw one of these at the shooting range once, but you didn't get a chance to fire it, unfortunately. The man notices your look. Hangerly spits on the ground and waves the barrel. He's evidently rushing you to, to answer. Wait a minute. Maybe it's you who's following me. The man looks at you in confusion, as if this has never occurred to him. What do you mean I'm following you? No way. I'm definitely not. As for you, I'm not sure now. Yeah. Don't you... Don't you pass the bucket. Raise one eyebrow skeptically. Don't give yourself airs. Don't you look at me like that. I'm the one asking questions here, by the way. And you answer them. The man bears his teeth angrily, name straight at your head. I see. You keep silent. Alright then. I'm starting to count down. Three. Two. He squints one of his eyes and licks his dry lips. Keep stubborn silence. One, fire. With these words, he pulls the trigger. A surprisingly quiet shot breaks the tranquility of the ancient forest. A flock of birds uh, rise crying from the shrubbery at tops of the age-old trees. It seems as if time is standing still. Ah. Oh. I, whoops. I was assuming he wasn't going to have uh, ammunition. 
That's obviously not the case. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. I've not been following you. I was just passing by. Well, I don't believe you. You must have learned that I'm keeping my stash in this forest and does uh... The man's eyes turn wide and he quickly shuts his mouth, realizing he's just spilled the beans about his stash. I don't give a darn about it. I'm telling you, I've got my own business here. The man coughs dryly and knits his brows together. It seems to you that in his mind, uh, there's a battle of two simple ideas concerning you. To just pass you by and forget about it, or to shoot you dead and forget about it. Yeah, it's... Listen, mate, just go your own way, and I'll go mine. Evidently, your words were enough to calm the angry man down. He looks at you coldly, but still lowers his rifle. Alright, okay. I believe you. Although I'm most probably making a mistake. Go your own way, and I'll go mine. I hope they'll never cross again. Right. Alright, he's probably gonna kill me. Oh, darn it. Whoops. I... I think I can kill him. I just need to, uh... Crap, he's getting away. Well... Well, he killed Zulbar. Gosh darn it. Alright. This might not be... I might not be able to do this. What? Oh, that's not going to work out. I need to hit him both times. I want to hit him in the eyes, but... Oh wow, 30... 38 damage. That's pretty good. Right, if I survive this, then I'm good. Be in rough shape, but that's fine. Hey there, uh, Fidel. We've got this, man. He's almost dead. Let's get him, guys. Gosh darn it, man. How close is he to dying? I'm not that close. Well, that's not gonna work. Okay, I'm gonna try using the knife, I think, instead. So get more attacks off, and um... oh, that's really good. Get the eye shots. Only eighty-seven percent chance to do a ton of damage. Definitely the way to go here. Awesome. Well, that worked out in the end. There's a lot of good stuff here. And a duffel bag, which is really good. Can we give a duffel bag to uh, Zulbars? We cannot. I'm not over encumbered, so we did get the uh, Vinterez rifle. The VSS Vinterez was developed in the late 1980s by the Russian Industrial Design Bureau. Uh, T.S. Neat Talk Mash, and manufactured by the Tola Arsenal. This weapon is quite rare in the wastes. 
It really is. I'm gonna give it to Fidel. That'll come in handy later. Well, there we go. Oh, and uh, Fidel, or Zobar's leveled up. I don't think Fidel did, no. Oh, did I not get this last time? Whoops. Well, that'll come in handy. <laughs> I'll make sure it saved this time. I swear that I selected that last time. I guess I didn't. Well, that little encounter took longer than I was expecting, but uh, with the power of quick save and quick load. Anything is possible. Definitely don't need all these mushrooms, but I think... There might be another quest for them. Oh, it's just a training grenade. Nothing crazy. But again, ammunition I'm going to keep on Fidel, so I don't sell it. That's a chance of stunning. Hallucinating. I wonder if it actually does anything. All right, there's one more event. Oh, it's really close by. We'll take care of this real fast. I don't remember exactly how much meat I need for this. You can inspect it. A giant wooden idol is towering in front of you. You get an unfounded feeling that the carved eyes of the idol are following your every move. Listen to your feelings. Close your eyes and carefully listen to your feelings. You can't really hear anything special. You feel the same way you always do. Besides, now you feel a bit hungry. See, it does give you a hint. Do not carve an obscene word into the idol. Examine the idol. The idol's head, is the idol's head so to speak, is adorned with something like an ampix, with a symbol carved into it, either of a sun or a wheel. Its hair and beard are done very thoroughly, down to the smallest detail. But most of all, you are drawn to the eyes of the wooden giant. They seem to almost be alive. The hands of the idol are clenched on the handle of a hammer, whose pine rests on the face of the carved anvil. Perhaps there's some important symbolism to it. Or maybe the carver just let his imagination fly. One way or another, this is a rather impressive work. Despite the damage done by the elements, the idol still looks rather well. Knock on the idol. Knock on the surface of the idol with your knuckles. You can repeat this on the different sides of the idol, just in case. Uh, judging by the sound, there are no clandestine cavities in the idol. Or you simply fail to find them. I wonder if there is one, then, if you have enough attention. Alright, oh, step away from the idol, and you want to stand in the circle here. That's a way to rotate your character. Alright, then we want to drop Sarth 1. Okay, that wasn't enough. Whoops. Did not want to eat raw meat. Keep doing that. Stop doing that. There we go. Oh, there it is. Okay. So three pieces of meat. And it's in flare and suddenly you feel much luckier than just a moment ago. It seems to you that you can hear the hear the that you can hear a booming laughter. There we go. Jeez, we just can't read. So we just gained one luck. 
just by placing three meat on the idol. I, can, I think I can pick up the meat, but I'm going to leave it there just in case uh, the idol gets mad about me taking it. All right, but I'm going to call it here, and in the next episode... Did I loot this one? Pretty sure that I did. Or I didn't have anything in there in the first place. I'm going to call it here, and the next one will go over to... Is it over here? Over here. Yeah, we need to go over there and... Uh, Examine that hole that has the log over over it. I'll probably just meet you guys back there next time. I'll just run there off camera. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.